Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about my favorite productivity app of 2019 and that is Notion. And I've been using Notion every single day for the last six months and it's completely supercharged my productivity, organization and creativity in a way that no app has ever done before. So I'm gonna be talking about it in three parts. So firstly, I'll give you a brief introduction to what Notion is and why you should use it. And we'll do a quick run through of what the main features of the app are. Secondly, I'll show you some of the built-in templates that they've got for students, but also for non-students that'll help you get started with Notion. And finally, I'll show you a little bit about how I personally personally use Notion to organize all the various aspects of my life. As usual, timestamps down below and in a pinned comment, so feel free to skip around the video if you feel like it. But now, let's just get started. So firstly, what is Notion? I would describe it as a sort of hybrid between a note-taking app, a database app, and what's called a content management system, which is sort of the behind the scenes system of what people use to build websites. And that might sound a bit abstract. It's, it's kind of hard to explain what Notion actually is because it just does so much stuff. But I suppose if we compare it to other note-taking apps, so Evernote, OneNote, Notability, all of these have a distinct structure that they force you to use. So for example, notebooks and then notes within notebooks, and maybe you can have tags, or you've got dividers and folders and then notes. But the point is it gives you a very rigid organizational structure. Whereas on Notion, there isn't really a structure or a hierarchy. You can pretty much create whatever system you want for organization and for productivity. And so the way I think about it is sort of like how standard note-taking apps are more like you know buying a pre-built house or renting a house where the structure is already in place. You're just putting your stuff in it. On Notion, it's like you're building your own house and you can build it with whatever building blocks you want. And then once you've set it up, then you can just add and remove and change and modify bits whenever you like. And again, this might all sound very abstract. So I'm just gonna hop onto the computer and I'll give you a brief overview of what Notion is actually like. Initially, everyone starts with a workspace and your workspace, I've uh, inventively named mine Ali's workspace. And within your workspace, you've got a series of pages. And that is pretty much the extent of the hierarchy. So let's create a new page within this workspace and let's call it, I don't know, let's say I'm making notes for my MRCP, which is one of my medicine exams. Let's call it medicine. And we can add an icon just for fun. Let's put a doctor icon in there. That kind of looks cool. And let's add a cover as well, just because why not? That's not a great cover, so change cover. And I can select an image from Unsplash. So let's find something to do with medicine. Um, let's go for that, that kind of looks cool. And so this is my medicine page and automatically you've seen some of the really exciting features of Notion and this kind of goes back to what I like to call the value of delight. And Notion is just such a delight to use. Like you can have these little icons, you can have these cover images. It just makes all sorts of notes just look a little bit nicer. And anything that makes note taking or organization of productivity a more delightful process is one that's therefore gonna be encouraging me to use it more. And that's something that I'm gonna be wanting in my life. And so within medicine, let's say we've got a few subjects. We'll go for cardiology, we'll go for, I don't know, renal medicine, we'll go for neurology, and we'll go for respiratory, just for example. Now, the great thing about Notion is that anything can become its own page. So I can turn cardiology into a page by clicking this little button turn it into page. And you see we've got a load of different options, heading one, heading two, heading three, blah, blah, blah. Let's turn it into a page. And now this becomes clickable. And now suddenly I've gone into my cardiology page and I can do the same thing. I can do whatever I like with my cardiology page. So let's just add an icon. Let's make it an icon of a broken heart because that makes sense. Let's add a cover image just for bants. So I'm gonna use um, let's find something to do with hearts. What about that one? That one's kind of cute. Let's pick that image. Great, so I've got my cardiology page and now I can put whatever I want into it. So let's name a few conditions. We've got atrial fibrillation. So I've just populated this with a few random examples of things that I might want to turn into pages. And so what I can do now, turn into page. Now I've got a separate page for atrial fibrillation. I can do the same thing for heart failure. I can do the same thing for myocardial infarction. And it just lets me convert whatever I want into a page. And so this makes it really easy to set a sort of hierarchy and my own organizational system. And one thing I can do is I can insert a breadcrumb by hitting slash breadcrumb. And what that does is it, it tells me where in my sort of notebook I am. So within medicine, we're in cardiology here. So we could cl click back to medicine and you see we're back to medicine. We could click back to cardiology. Now within cardiology, let's say we wanna click on atrial fibrillation. And again, I'm just gonna add an icon there. I'm not gonna bother with a cover image because why not? And then I can add a breadcrumb. And now we've got medicine, cardiology, atrial fibrillation. So at every level, it's this is almost like we're designing our own website, our own web content management system, but it's just that there's none of the effort that actually goes into designing a website. And so you can pretty much structure it however you want. So let's say I'm gonna include some content about atrial fibrillation. So let me just go on Wikipedia and copy and paste stuff into Notion. Um, let's grab it from Wikipedia. 
So at the moment we're within a page and all pages have content blocks inside them and blocks is the primary sort of feature of hierarchy of Notion. So for example, if I pasted this text in, this whole thing is a text block. And what I can, what can I do with it? I can, you know, do obvious standard formatting things, bold, italic, underline, but I can do other interesting things with this. So for example, if I wanted to take some of it, I can color it. I can give it a yellow background, for example, to make it stand out a bit. I can create separate text elements. So for example, the call out element looks like this. This is kind of cool. Something goes here. And again, we can just modify the colors. We can change things around. Um, that kind of looks cool. We can move stuff around the whole page. We can add headings. So let's add a heading. This is a heading. And the way you add stuff is by hitting the slash key and then just picking from whatever you want. So this makes it quite easy to actually input stuff quite easily. So let's go image, upload or embed an image. So let's again, find something from Unsplash just because it's built in. Let's pick an image of the room, for example. And then over time, we can build up our page into whatever we want it to be. And obviously this is just random placeholder content, but you know, this is your own productivity system, your own organizational system, your own note-taking system. You can do whatever you want with it. And so this page, for example, now has five content blocks on it. We've got this breadcrumb, we've got this text, we've got a heading, we've got a call out, and we've got this image. So that's five blocks of content. And on Notion, the free plan that anyone can use gives you 1,000 free blocks to play with so you can get started with it. The personal plan then costs $4 a month, but recently they've got this new student plan. So if you have a .ac or .edu email address, you get the personal plan plan completely for free. And so you can then use unlimited block storage. And I've been signed up to the personal plan for the last like six months, and I've used probably thousands of blocks by this point, but there's no limit on blocks for the personal plan. So it's, it's ideal, $4 a month, that's all it costs, or it's free if you're a student, so it's definitely worth downloading. So where are we so far? We've got workspaces, we've got pages, we've got blocks, we can pretty much do whatever we want with it. But all of this can be a little bit overwhelming, especially if we're starting from a blank slate. And that's why Notion comes with so many pre-bundled templates that you can use and customize however you like. And that's what we're gonna be talking about next. So yeah, templates. Notion comes with so many of them and on every instance of the app, so you can get this on iOS and iPad and Android and web app and Mac OS app, whatever. You've got this little template button and that shows you all of the templates that are available for Notion. So you can see they've got like absolutely tons of these um, for pretty much any use case imaginable. So let's say you're designing and you want a roadmap, you can do it like this. User research database, design tips, meeting notes, um, I quite like the personal template. So reading list, you can make a reading list on Notion. And over here, we've got these call out elements. And here is the database feature. So this is another really big part of Notion that I won't really talk too much about in this video, but there's gonna be another video coming about that. Um, but you can use the database feature on Notion to just organize anything into pretty much whatever format you can imagine. But the ones I wanna talk about here are the student and educator templates that they've recently released. And these are a ton of templates that, well, are useful for students and educators. So let's have a look. For students, we've got a class notes template. And within here, we've got this table database that you see we've got this review tick mark that we can tick if we've reviewed the content. We've got the name and this is a page so we can open it up into its own little section. So they're talking about Kazuo Ishiguro, name rings a bell, don't know who he is. Uh, we've got which class it's in, what type it is. We can, we can reference different materials, we've got dates and we can filter stuff to just include whatever the thing is that we want to see. So this is the class notes template. Um, we've got job applications to help you track job applications. We've got the reading list again. We've got grade calculator, thesis planning, Cornell note system, personal CRM. CRM is like a customer relations manager. So this is like how you can keep a track of the people that you meet. So you've got the name, you've got their associations, family, Google, college, last update, status, contacted. So essentially you can just make whatever you want with Notion. And that's a point I'm gonna keep returning to in this video. But the thing that I, I wanna focus on today is the Cornell note system. And you might've seen some of my evidence-based study tips videos. And we talk about how testing yourself is easily the most efficient way to get information into your brain. And so the idea behind the Cornell note-taking system is that instead of just taking notes, you're also writing keywords and questions for yourself on the side. So for example, in Notion on this template, we can write the notes over here. So we can say, I don't know. So I've written out some notes about atrial fibrillation, which is a cardiac supraventricular tachycardia. And so I've got the notes down the right-hand side, but then on the left-hand side, I'm gonna write my recall keywords. So over here, I might write um, management options for AF. And that, when I see that not looking at the notes bit, then I would force myself to recall what are the management options for AF. And then next to this one, I can write uh, what are the options for rhythm control. 
And then when I see that, not looking at my notes, I can then think about what are the options for rhythm control? Okay, we can use medicine like flecainide and amiodarone, or we can use DC cardio version. And then on this template, we also see that there is this uh, summary section at the bottom. This is another part of the Cornell note-taking method. It's useful to have a summary at the bottom of the note that summarizes the important stuff, and also maybe even at the top of the note. Um, and so what you can use is you can create a callout. And we discussed callouts earlier, but essentially it's just a way for your content to stand out a bit and just make your notes look a little bit prettier. So I could write a summary, atrial fibrillation is a... And so I've got my notes on the whole page, I've written my summary, and this is how we might use the Cornell note-taking method. And then what Notion does, it gives you this template and you can just duplicate this template however, however many times you like and you can customize it to your own liking. So this is a nice little starting point for a standard note-taking sort of template. So yeah, if you download Notion or just use the web app or download it on iOS or Android or iPad or whatever, you'll find absolutely tons of templates that you can use. And there's also loads of free templates that you can get off the internet. So if you like how other people use Notion and have their Notion setups, you can usually download their templates and you can adapt them to your own needs. So that was a quick look at some of the student e-focused templates on Notion. And just as a reminder, if you're a student with a .ac or .edu email address, you can get Notion completely free of charge. Otherwise it costs $4 a month, but to be honest, it's the best $4 a month I ever spend on any software ever. Okay, so here's a look at some of the ways in which I've been using Notion for the last six months to organize my life. And I'm just gonna show you a few of these student e related stuff. I use this for loads of other things, but that'll be the subject of future videos. So let's have a look in medicine. And I'm preparing for this exam, the MRCP. So I've got my page within there. And now here I've got this database structure. So I've got a table that has all of the various subjects in my syllabus. And so let's have a look at neurology, for example. So I'm gonna open the page and now I've got neurology. And what I've done is I've, gone through the neurology syllabus, the textbook, various sources, and I've figured out what all of the topics in neurology are. And this is what I like to call scoping the subject because it makes sense to have a skeleton structure of the subject in our heads before we then start learning any individual thing. So I've split it up into bleeds, muscles, infections, degeneration, myelin, cranial nerves, spinal cord, headaches, seizures and movement disorders, the neuro examination and genetic stuff. And this pretty much covers everything I need to know for neurology. And then within those, I've got these little toggle boxes so at the moment, these are empty, but actually let's find one that isn't empty. Um, ah, so within muscles, we've got NMJ, which stands for neuromuscular junction. And then within that, we've got myasthenia gravis and Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome, which are each diseases. And then within here, what I'm gonna do is over time, I'm just gonna be writing out questions for myself if it's a topic that I'm weak on. And so in an ideal world, what I'd be doing is once I've finished revising neurology, I would just look through this list and think, okay, what do I know about strokes? And then I would get my iPad out and just try and active recall everything I know about strokes, all the important stuff onto the page. And I would do that with every single thing. So then I know that all this content is in my head. And again, the nice thing about Notion is that it's just, it's kind of a pleasure to use. So, you know, I've, set, I've got this little crystal ball icon for neurology because I couldn't find a brain one. And then what I've done is I've made little icons for each of these just to add a little bit more personality to the thing. So I don't know if I were looking for an icon for degeneration, um, let's find someone old. Uh, That'll do. Degeneration for myelin. Probably can't find an icon for that, but I don't know. Nerve, is that a thing? Neuron, brain. Oh, there is an icon for brain. That's myelin within cranial nerves. That's sort of the face. So let's see if I can find face emoji. Yeah, why not? That'll do. Spinal cord. Spine, is that an emoji? Back. Uh, let's use a backpack to illustrate the spinal cord, but you get the idea. And this just makes studying just much more fun because you've got these fun little colorful emojis and it just, I don't know, it's just more of a pleasure to use and anything that's more of a pleasure to use is gonna encourage us to use it more and that's good when we're trying to study or to be productive. And then if I just show you my clinical hematology and oncology page, within that I've actually written some questions. So I've split it up into red cells anemia, platelets coagulation and white cells malignant stuff. And so within these, I've got these various uh, sort of categorical hierarchical organizational systems. But yeah, so as you can see, I've split up my subject into these various bits and I find that as I split it up more and more into these knowledge trees, that helps me remember what is in which category. And this is just another way of doing it. And so if we just expand out the notes for G6PD deficiency, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency, what I've done here is that I've written a list of questions. What causes it, what causes the crisis, which drugs are legit and how do we diagnose it? And then I've hidden my notes on this particular topic underneath one of these toggle points. And that is all these notes that I've got from this, which I've just literally copied and pasted from a question bank on the internet. But the point is when I'm looking at this, I see my questions first. And that means I'm, for I'm forcing myself to active recall. So then when I've 
force myself to active recall, I can then look at my notes and then I can read whatever I want. And so this is just a few different ways that I've been experimenting with the various note taking features of Notion specifically for student related stuff. But as you can see, if we just have a quick look through this, um, I use it to manage my email newsletters. You can subscribe by clicking the link down below. I used to use it to manage my videos. I use it for my weekly review. I view, I, I use it to manage my online courses. I use it to figure out content for my website and my YouTube channel and my team. I keep track of my ideas. I have this like life wiki where I share my thoughts, um, sort of organize my thoughts around creativity, organization, productivity, all the stuff that I care about. I use Notion to log, you know, what I do at the gym, which I'll explain a bit more later on. I use it to keep track of ideas for making money that I've got. I use it to keep track of podcast ideas. I have this resonance calendar thing that I'll talk about at a later date. And I'm also using it for things like planning out my book reviews and you know, archives resources, just like various, various use cases that I'll definitely be discussing in further videos. So yeah, that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks again, Notion for sponsoring this video. You guys are awesome. Um, and yeah, if you wanna download Notion, there's gonna be links in the video description, download it. It's free to use for the first 1000 blocks. You can just play around with it, download some templates, figure out if you like using it, you probably will. And then if you're a student, you can just upgrade to the personal package completely free of charge with your .ac or .edu email address. And even if you're not a student, like personal plan is $4 a month and I have gotten so much more value out of Notion than the $4 a month that I've been paying for it for the last six months. So yeah. Thanks very much for watching uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.